I thought this special was going to end until I realized that there are more gun laws here. Because after those mass shootings, answer, the answer to the question is, could there be any more gun laws, more restrictions? Well, the answer is yes. So let's take a look at a uh, at a gun violence protest. Thousands of people rallying against gun violence. Tens of thousands of people rallying against gun violence over this weekend, part of the National March for Our Lives protests. WCNC Charlotte's Jesse Pierre sharing more from local demonstrations and also spoke to people who say they want lawmakers to take action on gun safety legislation. What do we want? Gun reform! In Charlotte, in Salisbury, and cities across the country, people are taking to the streets to fight for gun reform. I marched in 2018 with one of my daughters and thought that was going to be the march and then we would see some change. We have not. March for Our Lives has grown into a national movement. It was created after 17 people were murdered and 17 more hurt during a mass shooting at a high school in Parkland, Florida. But as mass shootings become more prevalent, people like Charlotte City Council member Malcolm Graham are fed up with the lack of action on gun safety measures. The Second Amendment is not absolute. It doesn't mean that you can have an AK-47 where you can kill over 21 folks in Texas. It doesn't mean you can go to a grocery store and gun down 12 African American in Buffalo or go into a church and kill my sister, Cynthia Graham Heard, who was at Bible study. Hyatt gun store owner Larry Hyatt says when it comes to restrictions, lawmakers should focus on mental health. I think this mental health thing would really help us as a firearm dealer when we run that background check to know that if someone is turned down because they've got some issues, we don't need to know the reasons, we don't need to know any details, we just need a good yes or a no from our background check system. Meanwhile, the Senate announcing Sunday a framework agreement on new gun laws that include more mental health resources, improvements in school safety, red flag laws, and a more thorough background check for those under 21 years old. Some feel it's not enough. When you look at other countries that have stricter gun laws, the amount of mass shootings they have is incredibly low. And so I think that kind of speaks for itself. While others say it's a step forward. If we do incremental changes towards larger pieces, I support that. I support anything that we can get through this Congress right now. Step Salisbury March organizer Alyssa Redmond says she will continue to take and fight for until not only kids in the classroom, but communities across across the country are free from gun violence. Jesse Pierre, WCNC Charlotte. And let's look at those states that have those, let's look at the states that have gun laws and those that don't. I mean, the states, the states that have the strictest gun policy. In the state of California, Golden State has the strict, strictest gun control regulation in the U.S. According to the Brady campaign, it requires background checks for firearm sales and gun buyers must be at least 21. California, like New Jersey, limits handgun purchases to one a month. It's also considering curbs on open carry practices. Open carry states this year. Arizona has the open carry allowed, carry guns allowed. Texas, unknown. Louisiana, carry, open carry is allowed. Black, restriction, not permitted, not prohibited, not prohibited. In uh, Virginia, Alabama, New, Ham New Mexico, and Washington, open carry is allowed, open handguns restricted, not prohibited. But the green ones are allowed, like uh, Delaware, 
North Carolina, West Virginia, Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin, South Dakota, Wyoming, Nevada, Idaho, Montana, Arizona, Kansas, Kentucky, Connecticut, these gray ones, they don't have the unknown. The gray ones, no one's sure. So do there, does there need to be more firearm laws? Exactly. Arizona, like Arizona, Kansas, Maine. This is according to, to USA Today, Vermont, Wyoming, like, like we talked about here, this is from USA Today. When you have let when you have when you don't we have when you have weak gun weak gun restrictions, you're obviously gonna have another mass shooting happening, and by that time, it's going to be too late. Things have got to change. Coming up next, the myths about guns. And more on the, uh, and more about the Uvalde school shooting. Stay with us. Are you allowed to carry a gun home in your safety? The Supreme Court may rule in on that and more gun laws that we talked about. Here's John Stossel. Are you allowed to carry a gun for safety? The Supreme Court's weighing in on that. The issue? Whether the government must let residents carry a handgun in public. I know a little about this conflict because I once tried to get a carry permit in my town. They didn't make it easy. This is 50 pages. The form says I must promise I know the definition of other weapons like metal knuckle knife, a kung fu star. I don't want a kung fu star. I just want a gun for safety. It took hours Sorry. just to fill out the form. Then you have to go in person to police headquarters. Here they fingerprinted me, asked me to give reasons why I should be allowed to have a gun, and they charged me a $430 application fee. Half a year later they told me, no, you may not have a carry permit. They said I could try again if I could prove a special need for a gun. And I tried that. I showed the threats on my life. Not good enough, they said later. Yet other people got permits. Big celebrities got them. So did the politically connected. Friends of the ruling class, that's who gets it. Everyone else, you're out of luck. I wasn't famous enough. But I probably would have gotten a permit if I bribed the cops in the permit department. Turned out they were taking lavish gifts in exchange for gun permits. So were some politically connected lawyers like this man. And a man with police connections was caught offering cops as much as six thousand dollars to issue gun permits without doing background checks in other places a political contribution got people permits scams like that thrive whenever politicians pass too many laws and wait why do such restrictions even exist i thought the supreme court already ruled that all americans have the right to have a gun the High Court voted 5-4 to four that firearms are essential for self-defense no matter where people live. But many other courts have thumbed their nose to that Supreme Court ruling. That's why Alan Gottlieb and his Second Amendment Foundation support this new case. Robert Nash and Brendan Koch sued after they were denied permits, and that case has now reached the Supreme Court. You're excited about this. Yeah, and I couldn't be more excited about it. Court watchers predict his side will win especially because there are more originalist judges on the court. So it's likely that soon, more Americans will legally be able to carry guns. Of course, lots of people say that will be terrible. No more silence and gun violence. Women are less safe when there are more guns. Every vulnerable population, be it LGBT people, students of color, uh, has more to fear. Actually, data on new gun owners shows that many minorities and women believe having a gun 
gives them less to fear. There's an awful lot of women out there who can afford farm to protect themselves and feel a whole lot safer. And here's another common argument against people owning guns. The more guns we have, the less safe we all are. And we are the laughing stock of the world. We are the laughing stock of the world. Well, I think there's an awful lot of people in, around the world that wish they had the freedom we have in America and have the Second Amendment. 800,000 times a year, a person uses a firearm to protect themselves. If you call 911, they usually get there after the crime is over and fill out the paperwork. And it's true, in prisons, felons have always told me what they feared most was not the police but a victim who might be armed. When you go to rob somebody you don't know, it makes it harder because you don't know what to expect out of them. Often just showing the pistol is enough to protect yourself. Just the mere presence of the gun stops the crime from happening. And yet, compared to other countries, there is more gun crime here. There's more crime of all sorts here compared to many other countries. We have a lot of social, economic, and cultural reasons why. I mean to kill you in one minute, Ned. America has always been different. The frontier attracted people with guns. And even today, all the Americas have higher murder rates. Yet there's also evidence that given America's culture, allowing all people to carry guns reduces crime. Over the last decades, most states switched from banning carrying guns to allowing it. And as they did, violent crime went down. Especially telling, in each state, crime dropped right after they changed the law. Gottlieb says that's because... An armed society is a polite society. I didn't believe that until I started researching gun crime. But now I think it's true. More guns does generally mean less crime. And that's true. Let's look at the myth, the media hype. For more than 40 years, 1966 to 2000. Probably heard that America has the most mass shootings in the world. That's often given as a reason for more gun control. But economist John Lott looked into that claim, and he says it's a myth based on one bogus study. The United States has the most mass shootings. By far the most public mass shootings. You don't see murder on this kind of scale with this kind of frequency in any other advanced nation on Earth. Where did that claim come from? Obama and everyone else base it on a study done by University of Alabama professor Adam Lankford University of Alabama professor Adam Lankford this is Adam Lankford I studied 171 countries for more than 40 years 1966 to 2012 and essentially the answer was not surprisingly the United States has by far the most public mass shooters this claim received coverage in hundreds of news stories but all these people were misled by Langford. Langford's study claimed that since 1966, there were 90 mass public shooters in the United States, more than any other country. Langford counted 202 shooters in the rest of the world. Langford claimed complete data were available for 171 countries. But how did Langford find every shooting in all these countries, most of which don't speak English? And how did he find all the cases in the years before the internet? Few governments collect this data. Finding complete data for mass public shootings in just one developing country, say India, in the 1970s, would be an incredible feat. Many of these shootings would have been reported only in local outlets, in the local language. That shooting at the Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut. On the other hand, United States mass public shootings are well documented and hard to miss. If Langford undercounted foreign cases because he missed finding old newspapers or had trouble with language barriers, his paper's entire conclusion that the United States had the most mass public shootings would fall apart. Many journalists and researchers asked Langford for his data. Not only do he refuse to share a list of his cases, or even the number of shootings he found in each country, which are nowhere in his paper, he refused to share an explanation for how he found those cases. 
That's academic malpractice. Asked if he used foreign languages to search for these shootings, Langford stated, my data were not limited to English language searches. Asked what languages he used, Langford refused to provide that information. This is all the assistance I can provide at this time, Langford said. Look, I've researched crime for decades, and I've published dozens of peer-reviewed academic articles on the subject. Langford won't even respond to my emails with simple questions. Now, maybe he doesn't want to talk to me because I'm well known for my research, more guns, less crime. But Langford has refused to share his list of shooters and methods, even with strong gun control advocates. This all seemed very suspicious to me. So the think tank that I run, the Crime Prevention Research Center, researched it. Unlike Langford, we took a lot of time to find all the foreign cases we could. We even got translators to identify cases. Using the same definition of mass public shooters Langford used, four or more people killed in a public place, not part of some other type of crime, we found that he grossly undercounted foreign attacks. We counted well over 3,000 shooters, at least 15 times more shooters as Langford claimed. 31% of total shooters, despite the fact that we only have 5% of the world's population. Of the 86 countries where we have identified any mass public shootings occurring, the United States ranks 62nd. Norway, Finland, Switzerland, and Russia are European countries with significantly higher rates of murders from mass public shootings. The explanation is firearm ownership rate. When Langford's data are fixed, there is no relationship between gun ownership rates and mass public shooters. There's a lesson here. Langford's critical but simple error could have been picked up if journalists had only demanded his data and methods before publicizing his study. Journalists should learn to be skeptical. In the meantime, we should all be skeptical of news coverage of studies like this that simply confirm what journalists and people want to hear. Before releasing this video, I also asked Langford for his data and methods for finding shootings in foreign language media. Langford would not provide the information. Wow. When we come back, we're going to take you to a restaurant that allows open carry in Colorado years after that mass shooting in uh, Columbine High. Don't go away. We need up to speed here on Uvalde here. After the Uvalde shooting, parents feel there is no safe place to shoot. As mass shootings insist in federal action on safety, stall, gun safety stalls, concerned parents are making drastic changes in how they raise their kids. The fraud tragedy with 19 students teachers didn't happen the same month as shooting in the supermarket in Buffalo, New York, Dallas, and a church in Laguna Woods, California. <laughs> but parents feel like homeschooling could be the option or bulletproof backpacks. Companies that sell bulletproof that meanwhile have seen a surge in sales since the Uvalde shooting. 300 to 500% increase in sales. Owner Steve... Uh, Nairmore said. But the other steps parents can take is to... If there is a gun in the house, we'll send your children over for a play date. That's one of the biggest things ever. Also watch the... Uh, also watch Eddie Eagle. He is... He is the best one ever. And the Senate group argues on Broad Island new gun lines you've already shooting. We'll tell you more about that on that. Some other time. Giving back continues just a moment. Imagine this. You go to a restaurant. Imagine this. You and your wife are going to a restaurant for your first date. You choose the shooters. The shooters grill in Colorado. And then you feel you, you finally realize there's guns. And your wife asks you, uh, you want to go someplace else? No, no, this will then you say no no, this will do. But what if you found out that it's become very popular, and you might want to tip, and you might want to tip well? Tonight, we're going to take you inside Shooter's Grill. Now, this was back in 2014, 
And as Quentin Sindel tells us, you you better tip well. Very well. Every morning, Lauren Bobert starts the day with some blush, fixes her near perfect hair, and puts on her sparkly belt. But she is not fully dressed without her bullets and her 9mm semi automatic. This is the way of life for Lauren, a 27 year old mother of four. Should it back up as soon as we start? Green's got a gun. Find Green got sight. missed. <laughs> Go slower. Ready? Okay. Green's got a gun. Pull it out. Find the front sight. Are you a good shot? Generally. So when she and her husband opened this restaurant a year ago in their hometown... How was your meal? The gun theme seemed totally natural. Lauren took it one step further. I wanted to start carrying just for my protection. This is my establishment, so I didn't see anything wrong with that. I began to open carry, and then my, my girls started to approach me and ask if they could open carry as well. They call the place the Shooter's Grill. And of course, where else would you expect to find a place called the Shooter's Grill than right off the highway here in Rifle, Colorado? It is a very common thing here. We, we see people open carrying all the time. We live in Rifle, Colorado. It's a small town. It's a rancher's community. It is like the Old West out here. Nightline ventured to Colorado's western slope to check it out. Inside, the place is packed and the waitresses packing. What is this? Uh, it's no. a Ruger 357 no. Good kick? I mean, is it? Uh, it's, it's kind of a pretty hard kick, but nothing that I can't handle. <laughs> <laughs> and they are fully loaded. Does anybody dare leave a small tip? They still tip like normal people, you know? So, I mean, it's not like we're going to shoot them or anything if they leave us a small tip. What's happening at the Shooter's Grill is an offshoot of a controversial movement started in Texas to legally and openly carry guns in stores and restaurants. This is probably the safest corner in San Antonio right now. But a growing number of national chains like Target, Starbucks, Chipotle, Chili's, and Jack in the Box have asked customers to leave their weapons at home. This has only enraged the open carry movement. But here, the concept is turned upside down. Instead of armed customers, it's the employees. I have a right to carry my firearm and I'm going to carry it. Or most of them. You're not carrying. Right. Why not? Uh, I guess I don't own a gun. <laughs> I wish I did, but... Are you the only person in here that doesn't own a gun? No, there's a ton here. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you're, you're the two holdouts? Yep, we're okay. getting there. We haven't jumped on the bandwagon yet. Okay, all right, why not? I'm Okay. Five, 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 five. The grill is so popular... We're from Nashville, Tennessee. Food sometimes sells out. But most people we met didn't come hundreds of miles for the burgers. We're from Nebraska. Featuring names like the Guac 9 or the Swiss and Wesson. What made you want to come in? The guns. The guns. <laughs> I firmly believe that education and safe and responsible use of a firearm is perfectly fine in today's society. But is it all just a gimmick? My firearms have nothing to do with the amazing hamburgers we cook. Actually, um, the food that we cook is, is what started all this. Over the past few weeks, Lauren's restaurant has gotten so much attention that a U.S. Marine supposedly called in with an offer to buy a gun for any waitress that didn't have one. He called in from California and asked her owner if there was a girl that he could buy a gun that didn't Three days ago. Yeah, it's a Kimber 45. Of course, not everyone is thrilled. From Facebook and social media posts wishing harm to Lauren and her employees, random phone calls at the restaurant, shame on you, to actual hate mail. Hope God punishes you for what you are doing. Hope that you and all your patrons will kill yourself. Pretty harsh. That is pretty harsh. Then there's Colorado itself, which, after all, is a state that's seen its share of gun violence. The massacre at Columbine High School. That was the weekend before he was killed. And two years ago, Dave Hoover lost his nephew, A.J. Boyk, at this Aurora movie theater. 2.30 that evening, went to bed, and Teresa called my sister. She calls, screaming on the phone. I picked it up, and I said, what's, what's going on? What's wrong? What's wrong? She says, I don't know where A.J. is. I said, he's at the movies. She says, turn on the TV. Get up, turn on the TV, and that's when it hit me. And I went, oh, my God. A.J. was one of the 12 people killed that night. Hoover argues the shooter's grill is glorifying gun culture. This is America. They're allowed to do that. But you can't glamorize the gun. The gun will never be a glamorous thing. It's just an object. 
Hoover has been in law enforcement for three decades. He worries that when shots ring out, more guns equals more confusion for police. I don't know which one's the bad guy, which one's the good guy. I know I'm going to engage the, most, the one that's closest to me. And I hope to God that's the bad guy, as you never know. People in Colorado, for example, like Aurora families, like Columbine families, who think that this is sort of a normalization of guns in America, which has got this violent undertone to it. Mm -hmm. What's violent about it? What's violent about law-abiding citizens carrying a gun? A lot of people don't want to be around firearms, don't want their families around it. This is not necessarily normal everywhere. I think it should be normal everywhere. Yeah. You know, I think it should be a common sight, and I think we'd have a lot less violence if it was. Lauren insists her employees and her customers are safe. I'm more worried about my cooks getting burnt in the kitchen than a firearm going off in the restaurant. Most businesses nearby don't seem worried by all those guns. But one shopkeeper across the street hopes the staff will know how to react if the worst happens. The people who are carrying them, the, the employees, yeah. uh, I know they've been through training. I know that they're legally able to carry the guns. Yeah. I just hope that if somebody happens to come in there uh, and test them, that they'll be able to take care of things. But other than that, I... I feel great. I went there and ordered lunch today. Lauren says all of her employees have to take classes and know how to handle their weapons. Even the local police chief says in Rifle, things are different. I understand why some people from the outside may see this as a little bit odd, but for here it's really quite normal. They really stress the classes, no alcohol is served. Okay. Uh, so this business model that they have really fits in with the community. And the burgers are good. And the burgers are great. <laughs> All the national attention and nonstop business, not only for the restaurant, but for Rifle, has Lauren considering a possible franchise. It sounds exciting. Um, maybe we would get a couple more restaurants going before anything. But um, there's there's been a lot of talk of it, a lot of people calling, a lot of people even demanding it. And um, it, it's, it's actually kind of honoring that somebody wanted a piece of what we have. Lauren and her Shooter's Grill plan to keep on serving seconds right along with the Second Amendment. People call in all the time and tell me that this is not normal where they are and they would never patronize a restaurant like this. And I say thank you for your opinion. God bless you. I'm Clayton Sandell for Nightline in Rifle, Colorado. And if there was a Shooter's Grill here in Corpus Christi or anywhere in Texas, it would be a give me a break first. Think about it. Give me a break live from the Shooter's Grill. That would be history. But there's no history in the school threats. When we come back, has there been any more school threats ever since Uvalde? Actually, we're gonna say that for Monday. When we come back, there is more bullying going on. And as part of the Stop Bullying Speak Up, the 31st member has come on. And I'll give you, I'll, give, I'll announce that when we come back. One of my main goals throughout this show is two things. One, education, and two, to stop bullying, speak up. That is the main goal in this show, which is why I created a Facebook group part of my show. But something happened a few weeks ago. In Wentzville, the parents come forward after a viral video of bullying spark rage. It was an incident happening in the middle school. The video has sparked parents to push school leaders to do something about it, and that's what under the rug. You feel Watch. angry, you feel hurt, disgust. Um, for a school district to allow something like that to happen and not intervene. And some parents say this isn't a one-off incident. Jenna Ray hears from some who say bullying in Wentzville schools runs deep. Sam, for the past 24 hours, parents on social media say they're embarrassed and downright infuriated with the district. This all stemming from a video showing a bullying incident inside Wentzville Middle School yesterday. We spoke with parents involved in the situation and others who claim the district has been sweeping bullying under the rug for years. One student dumping chocolate milk on another is just the beginning. 21 seconds go by without a single staff member intervening. For a school district to allow something like that to happen and not intervene right away or be aware that situations that are occurring are just, it's mind baffling to me. Melissa Allen and Paul Tripp's daughter, Beata, is in the red shirt. This isn't the first time I'm, it's, I've gotten calls from him once a week for the last couple of months. Honestly. Two weeks ago, 
she accidentally stepped on a girl's shoe. The girl punched her in the head over and over again as she ran down the hallway. Allen and Tripp say they've been to Wentzville Middle and talked to school leaders several times about ongoing bullying involving their daughter. The video from Tuesday, which has been posted on social media, caused a stir among Wentzville parents. Many saying the school hasn't taken bullying seriously for years. Here's the messages. It's time we start going to board meetings, town halls, where taxpayers are to a private example of school leadership showing over this and the answers. When Salt Lake County camera kids need to be expelled. What is your concern in the school district? There's just not enough discipline for the bigger stuff that's leading to bigger issues. When I saw that, I. You know, I I posted it and said, I guess things aren't changing. Patrick Vining has a junior at Wentzville High School. In 2019, as Vining's son Ian sat on the floor of his eighth grade classroom, this happened. Oh, absolutely. As a parent, nobody wants to see their child put through that. Vining says he got an attorney involved because the school wasn't taking the incident seriously. Now he, Alan, Tripp, and other parents are begging school leaders for change. What's not going to work is to try to badger the parents or, or push something down that's not happening. We need to bring this to light. We need more people to come out and share their stories. I just hope the pro proper measurements are taken to just keep our kids safe. Tonight we learned the parents we spoke with are pressing charges against the student who poured milk on and repeatedly punched their daughter. School leaders were not willing to do an on-camera interview with us this afternoon. Instead, they sent us this statement in part saying, we do not tolerate this type of behavior in our schools. Our team has completed an investigation and appropriate discipline has been given. I'm Jenna Ray for News 4 tonight. <sighs> When will this stop? When will it stop? It's not gonna stop until the kids feel great about themselves. He's like, you think you're tough? Well, I'm tougher than you. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna stop. Cause I'm gonna tell you right now, let me tell you something. Inside every bully, there is a coward. I'm talking to you. You better listen. Inside every bully, there's a coward. And now looking back in our now looking at our group, one person who joined the group posted something on here. Her name is Lisa Ladifa. Ladifa. I can't even pronounce her name. She's she's with the She with teen leadership. He's a, he's a, she's a director of the teen leadership Cho director choice center. And and I think it would. I think it'd be best. So I asked her if she would come on, but she said that she wouldn't. So. We're gonna have, I'm gonna have her on in three weeks. So in three weeks, we're gonna be, we're gonna, this is gonna be a game break first. Another guest comes on, Lisa Ladifa, I can't pronounce her name, Lisa L. So her, cause I'm, cause she gave me real one to, cause she's a moderator, I'm gonna make her a moderator for this group. And if you have a bullying story you like to tell, Post on the group. We'll have the link in the description below for our Stop Bullying and Speak Up group. Barbara gave me a break special. We're going to make an event. And if you'd like to know how to stop bullying, look at one of my articles at the Give Me Break newsletter, givemebreak.substack.com. That's all of this edition of Give Me a Break Sunday. We're off in a few weeks. We're, we're going to be off in a few weeks. So we'll see you three weeks from Friday, July 1st. The reason for this is because. I gotta catch up on my on the Game Break YouTube channel. We're doing some reruns here, so I'll see you July first on this on the American Player channel. Reruns on the Game Break YouTube channel. Newer ones on the, the American Player channel. Still song covers and all the other things. So just make sure you subscribe. Post notifications turn on, and make sure you join the group. And also make sure you join my fan club here.
Thank you all for here. For all of us here at Gaming Break and YouTube, good night.